It's your brother, Alan Radineko, welcoming you to the Really, Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of our great God. So powered by the Pastor Alan Radineko Center for Inspiration, the PLACA. This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation, gem sewn upon the crown of Jesus. We're sharing truth this morning on the smart end time focus. Yeah, coming from Matthew 25th chapter of Matthew 8 through 13. We are praying together and after we dive into it. Our Father and God, we bless your name, God. Thank you for the wonderful, wonderful weekend that you have granted unto us. was so sweet. Take all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, this morning as we go on into sharing, we trust your God for that same ready help that we have always received here. And we give you thanks in advance. Take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask it. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, 25th chapter of Matthew, and we are going to verse 6 now. Uh, and at midnight, a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest that should be, not be enough for you, for us and for you. But go rather to those that sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him into the wedding, and the door was shut. And afterward the virgins also, saying, the other virgins also beg your pardon, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say unto you, I do not know you. What therefore? For you know not neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. We went right back to 6 to create a little overlap. Now, um, uh, we spoke about at midnight. You know, the midnight hour. What happens in the midnight and all that. That's when the bridegroom came. It, came. it didn't arrive on time at all. And then... All the virgins awoke from the sleep. Of course, when they made a lot of noise, they awoke from their sleep. And then the foolish ones now said, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. That's something I forgot to mention the other time we were in this place. But let me just quickly mention it in passing and go. It says, all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. You know those days when you use a lamp with some wick and, you know, the wick is burning, uh, but not looking so neat. So when you trimmed it, it made the shape of the fire. To be very beautiful, yeah. So it's also important for us to shape in our lives that when the bridegroom shall come for us as church, we may be shiny brides without spot, without wrinkle, ready to meet our Lord, our God. Amen. And now the foolish people, that's the, the five, the fifty percent that were that didn't take oil along, they said to the wise, "Please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out." Okay. If that's deep not to totally gone out. <laughs> some of them probably were out, some of them were about to, you know, and, and that's what happens when you have not done what you ought to do. So, the first question I ask myself, why would they expect these people to give them some of their oil? Knowing what happened at the beginning, as they were all coming, these ones, they didn't have free hands, like uh, um, the foolish ones, because of their choices, because of their priorities, they had free hands, they had free movements, they had, um, mm, what do I call it now? They had room to do as they probably would love to do. Um, nothing affected their looks or their dressing, nothing made them look clumsy or awkward. And um, yeah, all those things that they considered at that time. Now, knowing that while you were coming, you had it all good. And these people, they sacrifice in carrying something. And you know, why would you expect them to give you, knowing that they saw you, the, how free you were, and how much you were having fun while they were, you know, doing their best to make some sacrifices to make sure that things were fine? Why would they give you? Because they knew they were nice people. If not, if they knew that they were uh, vindictive people, people not so nice, they would not even turn to them to ask them any question. They turned to them because they realized that they were nice people, and that leads me to something. There are some of us, um, we are counting on God's niceness, yeah, to answer our prayer. Believe me, these nice people, these five nice people, they said no. So in the same way, those of you who are counted, counting on, oh, the Father God is a nice God. Have you heard it before? People say it all the time. You know, God is a nice God. If you are counting upon that, nice people say no. So if God, because of his niceness, says no, that's, there's nothing to it. Nice people do say no. These people were nice people, but they said no. Okay, that's why they could turn to them in the first instance. If, if they knew that there were people who would say, oh, you, you know, they would never have turned to them. Yeah, so also God will not do that to you. He's a nice God, but he could say no. So you must learn to operate properly according to the word God. That's one. So we go on now. 
and then uh, those ones now say, "Oh no, sorry, uh, lest there, uh, lest there, there should not be enough for us and for you." They said, "No, there's a time to say no." Saying no is as important as saying yes. And we must learn to say no. We must learn to, to, to know that the power of no is, in, is as important as the power of yes. And they gave a reason. Look, if we are not careful, all of us will lose out. That's it. So these people are really wise. In trying to be nice, all of us may lose out. And that is the thing about this uh, being nice, being nice. You may put yourself in trouble. At the end of the day, both you and the person to whom you are being nice, without considering many other things, or without being realistic, without weighing options very well and situation very, very well, the two of you may end up missing out, you know, or losing out at the end of the day. So they said, no, lest we all lose out. It's better for us to have 50% than for us to have zero. So no. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Okay? And then he said, go and get and buy. Uh, remember what said about the midnight hour? It's a time when you're on your own. It's a time when um, you are not likely to have anybody sell to you, buy from you, render services or anything. That's what we said about the midnight hour. Okay? But that's when they said, go to people that sell, people who are already asleep. <laughs> go to people that sell and buy for yourselves. And so they had to do last minute shopping. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> that's what we should talk about last minute shopping. Those, those things, they are never predictable. You don't know the outcome of last minute shopping. It's never good to leave your things on the last minute. Not only shopping, anything for that matter. Don't leave your deadlines until the last minute. Don't leave anything to the last minute. Plan ahead. You know, make sure that you plan with enough room for time. Um, it may just be waiting period. Yeah, it's better than losing out because you didn't start on time. That's this last minute things. Many times they fail. Okay. And um, so they had to do that. At the midnight hour, what a time to do uh, a last-minute shopping! It was just not good. Anyway, uh, as it happened, uh, the bridegroom came, and the people once who were ready, they went with it, and the door was shut. Yeah. So you see, he's talking about being ready. He's talking about the fruits of prioritization. Yeah. It was because these people prioritize at that time that look, um, not having free hands <laughs> is not as important as having extra oil. Um, not looking the way we like to look, you know, dainty little uh, ladies in waiting is more, you know, having oil is more important than that. And all the things, that pra this, if they are reaping the fruit of prioritization. And so also it is with us, especially towards this end time. We must not lose our focus. We must be focused on the proper thing. These other ones were focused on less important things or so many things. Whereas these people were focused on one objective we must enter into with the bridegroom. Praise the Lord. Now, so also, uh, we should be so focused at this end time so that um, nothing will catch us on our ways. We will not be engaged in last minute unnecessary stuff or last minute things, or things we ought to have done long before so that we will not miss out for any reason. Anyway, they went around to buy and uh, eventually they, they got to buy. That was a miracle that they got to buy at the midnight hour. But you know something, they didn't, still did not open for them. Again, we come back to this whole thing. That you are obtaining miracles, they do not guarantee heaven for you at all. There was no guarantee. These people, they got a miracle for them to have been able to get oil at that time. They got a miracle, but they still miss that um, the, the, the wedding of the bridegroom, which is actually talking about what happens at the wedding of the, the, the bride on the long run. Praise the Lord. So they got miracles, but missed out on what, what was more important. Again, we're back to priorities. Prioritization. They are reaping the fruits of not prioritizing. That's the now. The, the, the negative effects of not prioritizing, the negative effect of having the wrong focus. They were more into externalities and things and things and things like that. Whereas, it is important for us to focus on the bridegroom, the coming of the bridegroom. And to those of us at this end time, that is the focus that God expects us to have, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What are you doing in terms of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? What service are you rendering to God? What service are you rendering to humanity? What service are you rendering to your local assembly or to the body of Christ in general? What are you doing in preparing yourself so that, um, okay, Paul was the one who said he will present his convert. At least you can do something to present yourself perfect and entire before the Almighty God whenever you're going to face him. You know, what are you doing in that direction? You're not doing anything. You are rather focusing upon 
<laughs> upon 666 and the beast and, and all that. Those are not the things to focus your energies upon. All those things are by the way. And honestly, the earlier we treat all those people as by the way, the better. Our focus should be on the bridegroom. Hallelujah. That is what will make us look at what we are carrying, our priorities, our prioritization, the way we look, whether we have our weak you know, our lamps are trimmed and it's having the right shape, whether we have the right shape in the presence of, of the Lord and all those things, that should be our focus, not all these other things. And you may expend so much energy doing so research on the Antichrist. What in the business in the world, you know, are you bothering yourself about all that for? May God help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Okay? As they watch, therefore, because you don't know the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Can you remember where we began from? It began from the story of, of, of a servant who said his master will delay. And then went on to the story on the opposite side now, where the master, you know, um, uh, somebody said they will come early, but the master delayed. This one felt the master would delay, but he came early. So, this, so with, at the end, what he's trying to say is this, you just don't know when. Hallelujah. Therefore, be ready at every point in time. That's the smart thing to do at these times. Thank you very much for sharing time with us today. It's a Monday. And we are believing God that God will give you a fine work week in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. The Lord bless you today.